my name is um, Christy Venable. I am the CEO and founder um, of Smile Therapy Services. I, I'm also a licensed professional counselor um, by trade. And so just to get you started on Smile, kind of who we are, um, we are a mental health and wellness agency. Um, and so we actually have a couple different areas, right, that we focus on. We have um, our B2C area, which is our business to client, right, our direct services. Uh, we have a school-based side. Uh, we have school-based therapists inside of D.C. schools providing services on all tier levels. We also have a community side where we provide support to youth and adults um, for individual and family and group therapy. Um, but then we have our what we call our B2B side. Um, and that's where we work with corporations um, and school districts. And so we really work to help them improve their culture um, through customized preventative mental health um, interventions. And so we are extremely proud of the work that we have been doing. We just celebrated our seventh year anniversary last year, actually at the end of last year in October, um, and so we are excited. We are excited that we are able to continue to help the masses um, with their mental health. And so just give a little bit of background about myself. Um, I was born and raised in Southeast DC, okay, the District of Columbia for everyone. Um, and I'm a product of DC public schools and DC public charter schools. Um, I attended uh, the great Pennsylvania State University, or Penn State, as everyone know, um, and then went to grad school at George Washington University, or GW, as we call it. Um, and so when I started SMILE uh, seven years ago, I really started it um, twofold. One, so that people who really needed mental health support would be able to receive quality um, mental health services, no matter if they could afford it or not, right? Um, that was really my, my first and ultimate goal with starting SMILE. Um, but then I also started it to really be an extension for the school system. Um, okay, I see some Penn Staters in it. We are. <laughs> Um, so um, background, I was a school counselor uh, for some years, and I really was able to see, you know, all of the need um, that we had in the school system. And the need is great, right? And I knew that. And so I always brought in outside um, help um, by way of different mental health support for my students when I was in the school. And so when I created it, I really wanted to make sure that we can actually be that extension for the school to help them. Um, and so to this day, you know, we work with a lot of different schools, just assisting them with all of their mental health needs. Um, so that's just kind of some background story. Um, but we have evolved, right? We have been through ups and downs, you know, just like you all, we have been through the pandemic. Um, and really what we do is we think outside the box with our mental health services, right? And we really try to own in on what are the current needs and how can we provide those services for what people are needing now. And during the pandemic, one, it really struck us that we had to get into corporations. Um, we had to get into corporations because our individual clients, they were experiencing a lot in the workplace. And so we knew we needed to go in there and try to provide some preventative mental health support. And so we, we pivoted and we started focusing on that during the pandemic. Um, and we built some great relationships. Um, another reason why we started focusing on corporations and then doing more whole group things is because we knew that we could not help, you know, as many people as we could just by focusing on individual services. And so that's why we chose to now focus really on kind of whole group preventative um, wellness workshops, safe space sessions, um, you know, different professional development trainings so we can really help as many people as possible. And so that's kind of where we are now. Um, our focus for this year is we are um, really focused on working with the tech um, industry um, and also school districts. And so, you know, what we found with the tech industry is they were going, going, going nonstop. 
um, but no one was really tuning into their mental health. Um, and so we actually have been blessed to work with some great tech companies. Uh, one of our biggest clients is Microsoft and just supporting them, you know, with their um, mental health. Um, and we see the need. So we will continue that this year. Um, and then the school district, right? We know how much the schools are suffering right now with the teacher shortage, with all of the different the mental health issues that have been going on. Um, you know, the increase in violence in the schools. And so we are now just really focused on supporting the schools even more, but really for the school staff. And so that includes doing um, our wellness workshops for them and also our mental health trainings for mental health staff, um, but also for regular staff, right? Doing trauma trainings and different things on how to manage the students' behaviors. And so that's where we are now. We are excited about the work that we're doing. Um, I have a great team that is working to um, just change lives and save lives every day. And so now I'm going to bring a couple of them in. Um, they are going to introduce themselves, their role, um, their specialties, just so you can kind of get to know the team um, and all the greatness that um, we provide uh, as a team. And so our first um, person that we are going to bring up, um, his name is Chris Cartledge, and he is one of our um, school-based therapists, but, do, but he does so much more. So I'm going to let him kind of explain that. I'm going to bring him in. Hold on one second. Let's say hey to Chris. Hello, hello, Chris. How are you? Doing great today. How about yourself? We are doing great. Um, we can hear you well, everyone. Make sure you are saying hello to him in the chat. Um, so Chris, just introduce yourself, um, who you are, your role, your specialty, all the good stuff for the people. Yeah. So, and thanks for having me today. Um, welcome everybody um, to this LinkedIn Live event. Um, my name is Chris Cartledge. I'm a licensed graduate social worker with the Smile Therapy team. Um, I came to this organization out of a need do more, um, express myself, do more skills, um, be a man in this uh, in this space, in this community, um, and be able to, to make an impact. Um, uh, like I said, I'm a licensed graduate social worker. Um, I'm also a certified clinical trauma professional. Uh, we do a lot of trauma-based services, um, helping individuals, families, um, adults, um, be able to focus on overcoming their life challenges at school, at home, um, in the community, at their workplace. Um, helping parents understand different dynamics and skills uh, that they can incorporate into their family life um, to make things easier, um, to, uh, to improve their family bond and attachments to each other, um, to make things work easier um, for them. Um, I attended Howard University for my undergraduate degree um, and then attended University of Maryland for my master's in social work. Um, I'm a native of Prince George's County um, with High Point High School out there in Beltsville. Um, I volunteered with a lot of different organizations. Um, a lot of my work uh, with volunteering and giving back has uh, evolved and uh, been centered around children and youth. Um, I've worked with, uh, you know, music based organizations. You know, I was in band, uh, you know, full scholarship to, to college um, because of my band talents. Um, so I was able to transform that into giving back to uh, to students academically and musically uh, with different organizations in the D.C. area. Um, I have worked in dual diagnosis. Uh, counseling in the community, doing in-home services, uh, working with the homeless population in Washington, D.C. Uh, was very challenging, very interesting, but also rewarding when you're able to give someone the keys to their house um, because of the work that they put in, uh, because of the skills that they've been able to incorporate into their life and the growth that they've been able to see for themselves. Um, and that brought me uh, through child and family services as well. And now to Smile Therapy, um, being able to work as a full-time school-based uh, clinician, working with adults, um, working with uh, our, our students and staff every day, um, and now expanding from just a school-based therapist to do different workshops and educational opportunities, professional developments for organizations and entire school districts um, for prof uh, professional development around trauma-based services, informed trauma care in the classroom and in the schools, um, as well as doing uh, men's uh, health and wellness events um, also, and being able to get the fellas into this community, into this space, and be able to, to voice their opinions or voice their uh, concerns and needs in this mental health and wellness space. Um, again, glad to be here and welcome everybody. 
Well, thank you, Chris. He he gave us everything, right? He took us from A to Z and brought us back. So thank you so much. Um, I hope you guys have learned something just about Chris, his background. Um, we are definitely lucky to have him um, and him just being able to navigate different spaces for us. So thank you. We're actually going to be bringing Chris back on a little later, but thank you so much for the introduction. Okay, so next... Um, we are going to bring up Miss Sharice Matheson. So I'm going to let her introduce herself. Hold on one second. Hello, hello. Hey, Sharice. Hello. Hi, Christy. Hi, everyone. So excited. You know, I love our LinkedIn Live series. It's one of my favorite things that we do here at SMILE. Um, as Christy mentioned, my name is Sharice Matheson. I am also a licensed graduate social worker, and I serve as the operations manager here at SMILE. Um, and I'm so, I was so excited when I joined the team, and I have done so much since I've been here in addition to operations. I also contribute to a lot of the wellness workshops that we offer um, from development to facilitation, and then also manage a lot of our partnership. So I'm super excited to have the opportunity to work with this amazing team. And I know we're making such a huge impact in the work that we do every day. Yes. Thank you, Sharice. Yes. Um, yeah. So Sharice, like she said, she helps us with all of our partnerships. It's kind of like... <laughs> I know she has a her her head spin sometimes <laughs> because managing partnerships, but then she also is a clinician, so she is you know providing a service as well. So we are thankful for her. Sharice will actually join us back towards the end as well. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Christy. I also feel like like you and Chris. I got to shout my school. I got to shout out my school. Shout out your school. <laughs> so I graduated from Frostburg State University with my undergraduate degree in social work, and I graduated from the University of Michigan. Go blue with my master's of social work degree oh, okay well you know what the best say so you know <laughs> all that you know you know who we are but thank you for thank you Christy. all righty so next we are going to bring up miss beth kim our amazing art therapist hold on one second Hi, Christy. Hey, Happy Beth. Wellness Wednesday. Happy <laughs> Wellness Wednesday. Let the people know who you are, all your greatness that you have. <laughs> and, and it's a lot of greatness, yes. Sounds good. Thank you, Christy. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Beth Kim. I'm a clinical supervisor at Smile Therapy Services. I've been at Smile for three years and four months and still counting. Uh, my specialties include art therapy and grief and loss and child therapy. If anyone knows, I love the little folks. <laughs> I received my master's in art theory from G-Dub, same as Christy, and I have been practicing clinician since 2000. 2011. I'm also a licensed professional counselor in the District of Columbia, and I provide individual and family services with Smile Therapy Services. Um, I've experienced working with adolescents with eating disorders, individuals with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, uh, GW Hospital and Patient Psych, and also international work when I went to Chennai, India, uh, providing art therapy to homeless women. I recently graduated from the Went Center for Loss and Healing Training Institute in 2021, and I'm a certified in grief and trauma therapy. Uh, since then, I've presented on grief and loss in various settings, including DCPS, DCHR, and also in-house with our lovely staff members. I also provide CEU trainings in conjunction with my peers on topics such as emotional intelligence, and over the pandemic, I have provided safe space groups for the AAPI community with Microsoft. SMILE provides us opportunities to connect with communities in need, and we strive for those we support to be seen, heard, and felt. And we are so honored to value, uh, to witness the stories of our clients and be there to support them in some of the hardest times of their lives. Thank you, Christy. Yes. Thank you, Beth. Um, 
Beth is definitely just super amazing. She helps us out with um, just everything um, that we have going on. And so we are super lucky to have her on the team. Thank you so much, Beth. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> and so next, um, we are going to have Mr. Marcus Whitfield join us. Hold on one second. Let me bring him in. Marcus, Marcus, how are you? I'm doing well. Can you hear me? We can. Okay, loud good. and clear. <laughs> good, good. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome. Happy Wednesday. I'm Marcus Whitfield, uh, licensed graduate uh, a counselor um, here at Smile. Um, it's good to see everyone. Um, I've been with Smile for approximately a year, a little over a year. Um, my undergraduate degree is, uh, was uh, I attended North Carolina Central University. Uh, with a major in marketing, so a little bit different. Um, but then I matriculated to the Chicago School of Professional Psychology, where I got my master's in um, um, psychology, counseling psychology. Um, like I said, I've been with Smile for a year. Um, I'm I'm in several roles. I am a community therapist, which means I work with uh, the population outside of the school, so adults. Um, and then I work. I'm a school-based therapist as well, so I work with uh, children. Also, um, like I said before, my major, my undergraduate degree was in marketing, so a little bit different, but I felt like I needed a little bit something different in my life. So I ended up teaching uh, for a few years. I taught special education um, and then I ended up doing school counseling. Uh, so I wanted a little bit more. So I ended up, uh, like I said, going back to school, getting my master's in therapy. So um, I used to work with Smile part time. And then I ended up working full time. And like I said, I've been working in, in numerous roles. Um, I helped out with Urban Teachers. That's a program where we um, we offer therapy services to teachers, um, which they definitely needed. Everyone needs it. Um, I also work with the Boys and Girls Club um, of, of Washington, D.C. So um, wear many hats. Um, I definitely like working with um, people who uh, are suffering from anxiety and worrying and all that good stuff. Um, and I, um, one good thing is that I am a male in this role. So right now it's not a lot of male, uh, it's a minority with male therapists. Uh, and I, I enjoy being a male in this line of, of work. Um, sometimes I have intangible qualities that I can relate to men um, in terms of therapy, which is good. Um, I serve as everyone. <laughs> um, um, but definitely, I think um, a good quality is to have a male therapist. So different men can definitely re relate to me. Um, but I just enjoy what I do. And and, and also think uh, we here at Smile definitely want to encourage everyone to uh, participate in therapy. I think everyone needs it, even us therapists. We have ther uh, therapists as well. Um, so it definitely uh, is a great program. Um, that Christy has um, for, for everyone. So we just appreciate you guys coming on, speaking us, with us today. Um, and that is my time, Christy. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Marcus. Um, and actually, thank you for mentioning that because I was going to mention that as well after you spoke. We actually are blessed to have four male therapists on our team. Um, and that is, you know, not anything um, that is normal you know, in, in the, in our field, just because like he said, males are definitely far and few. Um, and so for us to have four male therapists, um, you know, we are definitely just in a great place for them to be able to share their knowledge and their perspective. So thank you so much, Marcus. Okay. And next we are going to bring on Ms. Jave Evans. Hold on one second. Jave, how are you? Hi, I can you hear me? Yes, we can okay. hear you. Okay, wonderful. Um, I'm Jave Evans. I came into this field um, coming from an undergrad background in psychology. And my first job was actually working at Children's Hospital in the psych unit. And I literally went around and asked every single professional, what do you do here? How did you get to this point? And after talking to our family therapist, you know, I had chosen the profession of social work. 
And I'm so happy that that was my choice. It is such a flexible career and it has allotted me so many different experiences. I've been able to um, work at Johns Hopkins Hospital. And at the time we were in the top um, three providers for um, psychiatry. And I was able to work on the unit and have an array of clients and really just get to have a good understanding of mental health services and also how to really engage with your client, no matter where they are and meet the client where they're at. Um, I was then able to go into the school realm where I worked at a dual program that not only provided therapy services, but it was a special school for children that had extensive behavioral needs um, where I wrote IEPs and FBAs. And I just was able to get a different understanding than I had even had before from working at Children's Hospital. And from there, I came to SMILE and I have, you know, had a wonderful experience here. What I love is that I'm still able to be in the community. I'm still helping. And I also feel like I have a little bit more freedom than I had just being kind of constrained to the school. So I'm one of the, the community-based therapists. I'm not a part of the school-based program, but I love the school-based program. But um, in community, um, I have found my, my home there and I'm now the clinical-based supervisor there. And I am also helping SMILE develop CEs and we are excited that that's gonna be coming to you. Um, I've had extensive training in CBT, and I did a two-year program with Alvar Baker and Associates where I actually learned how to engage in exposure therapy and was later able to continue to learn more about trauma, which is one of my, one of my most passionate subjects in our field. And I was able to do that through a program where we, um, we specialized in TFCBT. So I really, really love the, where that's going, and I work with, with a lot of women primarily that have depression and anxiety and that are presenting with trauma, and that is really, really special to me, and I have that lens, and I still love the babies, um, but I am looking forward to seeing where we're going to go next, and I think I'm excited that we're going to do this wellness plan with you all and how to reach that goal because I want to focus on my wellness plans because I heard smile. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much, Javay. You cut out a little bit when you said you did the training and I just want to uh, mention it. You said TFCBT. So that's trauma-focused cognitive behavior therapy. So I just want to make sure that people heard that. Um, Javay has a wealth of knowledge in trauma um, and yes, like she had mentioned, um, we are actually working on becoming an approved continuing education provider. So we already have a couple of courses approved that we will be putting out there. So all of the licensed uh, mental health professionals, be on the lookout for our courses um, that will be coming to you soon. We are grateful that Jabe is helping us out. Thank you so much, Jabe, for uh, that you. information. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and so as you can see, so those are just a few of our um, employees that we have here. And as you can see, they have a wealth of knowledge, right, from ranging um, from working with youth, working with adults, school based um, in the community. We have a wealth of knowledge here. We really try to utilize that to the best of our ability to help all of our clients. Um, and so. Our next guest, um, and we are so excited to have her, um, I really wanted you all to get um, feedback on how is it to actually work with SMILE. And so um, our next guest, she is going to just let you know the real deal, right? She's worked with us before. She's called on us to support her and her team. Um, and so we thought it would be great to hear from someone who actually has uh, worked with us, how she works with us, and just her, how she feels about the importance of bringing mental health into the workplace. Um, and so we are going to bring up Miss Shanique Thomas. And I'm going to let her introduce herself. Hold on one second. Hello, hello, ma'am. Unmute yourself. 
I am so sorry. I was literally chatting away and did not realize. <laughs> that was <laughs> okay. How but are hi, you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I am great. Thank you so much for agreeing. I know you have of so course. much going on. Of course. <laughs> no, you always make out. a special effort for my team and I, so I definitely wanted to come and support you as well. Thank you. So I'm going to let you, one, introduce yourself, and two, just share how, you know, you've worked with Smile, some of the things that we've done for you all, yeah. um, and then your um, view and just um, yeah. thoughts on the importance of mental health in the workplace. Yeah. So hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be here to spend some time with you all. My name is Shanique Thomas. I work at Microsoft as a diversity sourcing program manager, and I'm also a leader for two of our communities. So I co-chair Black and Talent Acquisition, and I'm also one of the leaders on our board for the Blacks at Microsoft NCA chapter, which is the local DC chapter. So it's pretty cool that I've been able to partner with Smile Therapy Services because they're based in the DMV and you know I'm in the DMV. So that's been a really cool um, cool intersection. In terms of how I've partnered with this group, I mean, it really happened very organically. Um, I was planning some events for my community, and I realized that there was an appetite to talk about mental health and bring some awareness to mental health. So just for context, the groups that I lead are predominantly diverse persons, predominantly African American Black, and I'm sure you all know that a lot of times mental health is very taboo in our circles, right, in our families beyond that. And so there was an appetite for us to kind of start discussing those things or feel comfortable discussing those things. And so I started to rack my brain about like, how can we have this conversation like here at work? I know that the resources exist. So how can we take advantage of that? So I got introduced to someone, her name is Abeli, did not know Microsoft had someone who is, I think her role is senior program manager for like intersectionality, accessibility. I had no clue that this like someone's job was like dedicated to this type of work here at Microsoft. And so she introduced me to Christy and um, Smile Therapy Services. And so the first time we partnered was last, was May, last May for Mental Health um, Month. We kind of came in Christy and um, uh, Chris. And I think there was one other person that joined us that I, I'm forgetting, forgive me, who Sorry. came and they... Therese, right, came and they spoke to my community, told us a little bit about their, um, their their service, but also just like really help us to unpack some of the issues that we're facing as Black people in, in America and in corporate America. And it was very moving, very impactful. They also supported us recently in November for men's mental health. So again, reached out to Christy, like, oh my God, I have this idea. You know, I asked a question in one of our, um, like we had a town hall and I asked the men, how are we doing? And like, everybody was tight lipped. And I was like, oh my God, no, we need to, I need to do something. I always want to do something. I always want to um, like start conversations and so Christy was really gracious to help us in that way. Um, my favorite thing about like the partnership with Smile Therapy Services and really with Microsoft as an organization, I just feel like a lot of times you hear, leave your problems at the door, right? Don't bring your problems into the office. But for so many of us, when we're now working remotely, the office is in our home, it's even harder to compartmentalize, right? And so I'm really proud of Microsoft as a company to recognize that well-being and wellness in the workplace is important and that it oftentimes is not some type of like separated issue where you can just turn it on and off and pick it back up. And a lot of times it spills over into our work. And so partnerships like the one that we have with Smile Therapy Services is really, really, really important. And I really think that's the future of work. Um, like that's the direction that we're that we're heading. When we think of wellness, it's not just you know medical, dental, and vision, but it's beyond that. It's the the entire person or mental well being, and I think it's really really critical that we create space um, for us to have these conversations at work and really invest in these type of partnerships. So it's been very very um, transformative for myself and for my communities, and I, I feel like I've actually been able to build a 
a relationship with Christy personally. I've even reached out to her um, for help or guidance on personal issues I'm going through in my life. So it's even gone beyond just work and community work. And, and that's the special part of the partnership. Well, I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, we definitely appreciate you. Um, and we actually are really fortunate to be able to support you all, right? Mm -hmm. We know that there's so much going on, especially right now, mm -hmm. um, you know, in the tech field in particular. Um, and really, that is why, you know, for this year, we've chosen to focus yeah. on, um, on the tech industry because, you know, you all are the backbone yeah. of society, right, at this point. And, you know, it's like, who is there to help you to make sure that, you um, you are able to manage everything that is yeah. one, going on personally, but also going on professionally. Yeah. Um, so we have been definitely just grateful to be able to be there, to be your support. Um, thank you for joining us, for always calling on us. You know, she'll yeah. email and I'm like, what you need? <laughs> um, I, I do just want to also say, like, I just am so proud of you guys and I'm so excited for you guys um, holding space for this type of conversation. You know, I think about the last week that I've had, you know, every time we go online, there's another sea of layoffs, right? Yeah. And to think that those things don't affect us mentally, it absolutely does. And so yeah. I think it's really, really important what you guys are doing, um, like putting the spotlight on mental health in the workplace and showing, you know, sharing the services that you guys offer and how you can help to step in the gap. Like, I, I don't want that to go unnoticed. I want to make sure that I highlight how important that work is. And uh, trust me, myself and my team and the communities that I'm a part of, we've been feeling it so heavy, especially over the last week. And knowing that this type of partnership exists, like that's definitely comforting. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. I, and I appreciate it. Um, and like you said, it's so important, you know, at any point, but especially because of what we're going yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, and actually we were, we did something, a town hall yesterday with, oh, um, and I meant to send you a message. We did it with Bam Atlanta. Okay. I love that. And, um, it was it was great. It was phenomenal. They were engaged, um, but they needed it, right? Yeah. And we were so happy to be there to support them. Definitely, um, that, you know. And of course, like Shanique says, we are available to um, to all of our clients, whether they need something personally, mm -hmm. um, whatever it is. If it's in our wheelhouse, we are going to assist with it. So that is also just kind of the difference for us. Like we just want to make sure that we are there to support them on all mm -hmm. levels. Um, so I definitely appreciate you. Of Thank course. You so much for time out of your lovely day. I know you Thank have a lot you. going on. So <laughs> I'm not I'm, cute for you guys. I this is not me you. on a team <laughs> meeting. <laughs> So everyone, show her some love in the comments. She came on here looking super good. <laughs> you know, look, and I said, look, we got dressed up for the live today. Yeah, put a little <laughs> lip gloss on. Put a little lip on today. Make sure we were, you know, a little flawless. <laughs> And so thank you so much. We course, truly appreciate right. you. We appreciate the partnership um, and just know that we are always, you know, going to just be here to support you all and, all, you know, and your team Absolutely. for whatever it is that you guys Absolutely. are. Thank are you. Thank with. you for having me. It was brilliant. I got to meet some of your other team members. So that was fantastic. And I hope you guys have an amazing session and looking forward to our continued partnership. Yes. Thank you so much. Have no a great Bye, rest everyone. of your day. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, we so appreciate Shanique um, and just her partnership, just her working with us um, and her actually just feeling comfortable enough to call on us. Um, that is important, right? So we make sure that we not only just, you know, have these different um, clients, but we build relationships um, with our clients because we feel like that's so important, um, you know, with the work we're doing. And, and that's that really what, what makes the difference in people actually engaging in our services. Um, and so thank you so much, Shanique. Um, and I definitely did see some comments um, in there. We had a let's go, Shanique, and thank you and all of that good stuff. So thank you guys for engaging. Um, so now we are actually going to bring back um, 
two of our lovely guests we had today. So we're going to bring back Chris and we're going to bring back Sharice um, so we can just have a conversation. So I want to bring them back. Hold on one second. Okay, um, we're there. Make sure I can hear everyone. Um, so we are going to, we definitely want to just talk about, you know, just some different things that you can do to help you with your yearly wellness plan. Um, but before we jump to that, we want to touch on what's going on right now, right? Our goal is always to make sure that we are providing um, assistance for what's happening, the recent events um, that are occurring. And we all are well aware of the mass layoffs that are going on right now. And honestly, um, you know, I have just been taken back by the different companies that are laying people off and in the amounts that they are laying people off. And so, um, we know that this has to be a very, very difficult time for a lot of people. And so we just wanted to touch on just some things that you may be feeling right now, you may be just going through, and then some, some helpful tips and strategies um, that you can um, just put in place in your daily life right now to help you with managing um, the different symptoms you may be having. So, um, you know, like I said, we actually did have a town hall yesterday um, with the community with, within Microsoft about this very, very uh, same thing. Um, and so I'll actually just let Sharice just talk through some symptoms and different experiences that some of um, our uh, people that were on yesterday, some things that they brought up. Um, and I'm sure that their feelings and sentiments are similar across all of the different agencies. So, Sharice, if you could just talk to us about what, you know, what are we hearing and what are the people feeling right now um, as it relates to them being affected by these layoffs? Absolutely. So the first thing that happens with anybody with uncertainty, no matter what the uncertainty is, is anxiety and that fear of the unknown and that uncomfortability with about being not able to control the next steps of what is going to be happening. So that creates two things, stress and it creates anxiety. And from there, you see a multitude of symptoms that lead you back to the anxiety. So that's irritability, um, that's inability to fall asleep or stay asleep. That's the um, feeling wound up and just on edge, being short and irritable. Those are all symptoms that you will see when you're experiencing anxiety, um, particularly in a situation that you were not aware that it was coming and it surprised you and now you're in the midst of it and having to find um, solutions to a problem that is not super well defined. We found that in the Microsoft group, um, among others, they're unaware if they are on the list of individuals who will be laid off um, throughout the course of the year. So that creates a lot of anxiety. When you think about parents, when you think about um, anyone who has bills, homeowner or not, if you have bills to pay and how are those things going to happen if there's the potential for you to lose your income. Um, and then we know finances are one of the biggest stresses across the board uh, for millions of Americans. So it's a double-edged anxiety sword. Um, and we are here to you know, assist and provide resources. And the first thing that we shared yesterday was the importance of just being aware of what's going on, being aware of what you're experiencing, being aware of changes in your mood, and then giving yourself space to feel because all of those things are natural. Yes. Thank you so much, Sharice. Um, you know, and just in addition to that, you know, just helping people to understand that all of their feelings are valid. Right. Um, and, and it's warranted. And for them to be OK um, 
okay with that, right? I mean, people were making statements, you know, that we say it's okay to not be okay, but really fully understand that. Um, and so, you know, we just wanted to provide space for people for you to understand your feelings are valid. You know, we hear you, we see you. Um, and, gen and then just to know that it is not your fault. Um, many of these things are, um, or all of this was outside of their control. And it's really, you know, nothing that they, um, one thing they have done um, to warrant this. You know, this is just something that um, the overarching company decided to do for the business aspect. So we wanted people also to just to just understand that. So we're not taking ownership within and then relating and going into some negative self-talk. Um, with ourselves. So, you know, we definitely want to make sure that people understand that as well. And so when we talk about, you know, what type of things you can do, because right now you may be experiencing anxiety, some depressive states, right? Some also some grief um, and loss, right? In this time. So we had to explain that grief and loss is not always just when you lose a person. It's losing a, a relationship, you know, is losing a job, is is transitioning a situation. Um, and so what types of things can you do for that? And of course, we talked about implementing self-care um, in different wellness uh, spaces. Um, but Chris, if you can just touch on what are some, you know, different things, little things people may can just implement daily um, and even weekly to try to help them with managing some of their anxiety and then some of their depression that they may be experiencing right now? Sure thing. So uh, some of those simple things that you can implement into your daily structure are mindfulness and self-reflection. Um, they will allow you to help monitor how your body and your mind are feeling emotionally and physically, and you'll be better prepared to mitigate those symptoms that occur or happen um, due to these unexpected things. That anxiety is creating that fear for the future. So if you can bring yourself out of that spiral of worries and fears and insecurities to bring yourself back to the present moment where nothing has happened yet, you'll be more suited to tackle and strategize what are your next steps um, for yourself physically and emotionally um, and be able to kind of plan out what you can do next to mitigate the anxiety, but also whatever that present situation is um, that is causing that additional stressor, uh, stressor for yourself. Um, communicating with your supports. Um, and that can look a lot of different ways um, as far as with your family, with your partner, uh, with your therapist, um, with your friends, group chat, you know, your support network that's, that, that, you're, uh, that you have there to lean on. Um, at times when things come up that are unexpected, you need to have maybe like a short list of people um, that you can reach out to, your go-to people that you can lean on um, for certain conversations that you need to have where you know you can either vent to them or you can vent to them and possibly get some solutions or a little bit of direction um, to help you kind of manage or, or decrease that stress or decrease um, the, uh, that depression that is creeping up for you. Um, and daily, that can look like uh, simple things like taking a break, like actually taking a break. Step away from the laptop if you're at home, if you're in the office, step outside your office and just look around. Turning your neck from side to side loosens up all of these muscles right here. Just looking around, right? Looking at the trees outside, looking at the weather outside, um, eating a healthy lunch, making sure it's nutritious, not just eating anything and then rushing back to the activities or your to-do list. Um, taking a walk. These things help you exercise, helps raise your uh, raise your blood pressure and your heart rate. Getting outside, cooking can also help mitigate these things daily. Um, weekly, you can look at recharging yourself. What hobbies or things that you could participate in that you maybe haven't done in a while uh, might help you feel better? Singing. Some people like to knit sweaters, especially in the wintertime right now, right? Um, doing different crafts. Uh, we have our, our, our Mr. Whitfield who has his uh, who has his art business, right? Doing some crafts and painting can also help. Um, if you're athletic, getting back on the basketball court, maybe trying one of these uh, free boxing classes that pops up in your ads because you thought about boxing, right? Um, or even candle making, um, something that you might be able to do to help you decrease these uh, these anxious thoughts, decrease this uh, depression symptoms that are coming up for you, and regain a sense of control over what's happening around you and internally inside you. Um, and then monthly, you can look at uh, setting time off ahead of time, putting putting that away message, putting that time off in your calendar at the beginning of the month can kind of help with these stressors as they are there and you're not able to 
uh, to remedy, then remedy, remedy these things right away. Um, planning time off to step away for yourself, uh, being able to, again, get outside, um, allowing yourself to use your leave uh, for a staycation, for a vacation uh, to get away, uh, things that you can plan for um, a little bit ahead of time to help you with, the, uh, with this anxiety, with this depression. Um, the overall goal is to monitor how you feel, monitor how your body is responding, and then be able to manage that with these different skills that you can incorporate daily, weekly, monthly, so that you don't have this absorbent amount of stress, anxiety, and depression that builds up with no remedy, with no action that you're taking to actually decrease these symptoms. Yes, thank you, Chris. That was a very robust um, list. Um, and then with everything that he said, just be intentional about it. Right. Making sure that it's a non-negotiable for you, especially during this time, because it's such high stress right now. Um, you know, make sure you're intentional about your self-care, um, setting aside a time for yourself. Right. So, yes, you may have a family, kids, husband or wife, but be intentional about setting some time for yourself. Um, I think that's super important for all of us, um, especially when we're going through um, very stressful situations. Um, so just making sure of that. Um, anything else you want to add to um, some different interventions or, you know, how they can just help themselves right now being in the height of this um this situation that we're in. And please let us know if you have any questions, um, put it in the comment section, please. So we can answer those as well. Yes, uh, sh sure thing, just a couple a couple quick tips. Again, uh, before you cro cross the threshold, when you walk up to your house or your building, leave the stress outside if you can. Tell yourself and remind yourself, okay, I will come back to this tomorrow if that's possible. Gratitude and affirmations can help increase that positive mindset. Reminding yourself what you're thankful for Reminding, the, reminding yourself of the blessings that you have around you continually can help your mindset and your positive outlook. And then again, rest. Our bodies need to reset. Our bodies need to rest in order to be at our best. So making sure that you're getting that sleep, making sure that you're getting that time away. Perfect. Sharice, did you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, I was definitely going to add to just be mindful when we are, when our emotions are in a sensitive space, it's important for us to create emotional uh, boundaries. And that looks like what we are exposed to, whether it's the news or social media. So if you have news alerts and you're already on edge and then you get a news alert that there was a mass shooting somewhere, that's only going to send you into more of a stress spiral. So we have to be protective in that way, you know, cleaning up our social media feeds. So we're, you know, maybe muting um, accounts that are sharing news, um, muting accounts that maybe are related to different areas like crime and things of that nature. For me, one of the things I had to do immediately was turn the notifications off of my ring camera um, because there was so many notifications about different crime that was happening in my area and it was creating stress and anxiety for me. Um, so I cut that down so that way I'm not jumping every time my phone goes off thinking about what is happening in my community. Um, in addition to that, just for the for moms, wives, um, for those who may get pulled on a little bit more, I think about, you know, for those who have young children, they follow you around. You can't even get to the bathroom without them like knocking at the door and trying to come and find you. Um, so it's really important to create, like Christy said, those intentional moments. And what I recommend people do is what we all do is take a shower and when we take a bath to just extend that time out a little bit and really be intentional about this is my me time, even if it's just me in the shower um, and being mindful in the way that we are applying our soap and applying our lotion um, to just give ourselves that self massage and that self soothing. Um, and that's going to send a trigger to our body to just relax and to calm down. Yes. Thank you so much. I love that. And anyone who knows me knows I take long showers. So <laughs> Don't expect me to take a shower for a BTU and no good time because I'm going to be late. <laughs> I am really going to be late. Thank you so much for that information. That was super helpful. Um, I really hope it was helpful to those who are watching. Um, and so now we'll just turn our attention really quickly to creating a yearly wellness plan. Um, and I think when I hear those words, it's really 
how can you create something that you will stick to? That's what it really comes down to, right? Um, because we create maybe these big, you know, my solutions or different things that I want to do for this year. We'll, you know, be into it for a couple of months, then poof. We don't, we don't even remember that we created it, you know? And so um, how can we really put something in place, right, as it relates to wellness that we can really stick to? You know, and I will say something that I'm personally working on is being more consistent with just working out um, and really, you know, making a schedule for myself and really making it a non-negotiable, right? And inputting it no matter what I'm doing. Um, and so something that has helped me is one, before I even start my day, you're going to do a 20 minute workout, right? I'm going to get in there. I have the Peloton, the app. I don't really get on the Peloton that much, but <laughs> I have the Peloton app where they have workouts. Um, and so I try to literally work out before I get my day started. And sometimes it doesn't happen. So then I say, you know what? Well, we're going to, as soon as you get a break, you're going to go work out. And so what types of other tricks and different things people can do to really help them to stick to what they want their wellness to be for this year? What, what type of suggestions um, do you guys have? We can start with Sharice. I was going to say, I mean, you already said it, Christy, but it's um, being intentional, especially around like fitness. But we're talking about across the board wellness and like understanding that it's really a priority, because if we get to a place where we're not well, we're not going to be able to show up for the other things that we prioritize. And I think as professionals, one thing that we all have in common is we prioritize work. Like no matter what is going on, we're going to go to work. We're going to get there. We may even go sick. We may go not feeling well, but we are going to prioritize work. So if we prioritize our wellness in the way that we prioritize our work, we can be better at our work and get more um, return on the investment, the energy that we're expending every day in our work. So it's really that for me, I had to kind of tell myself, like, if I am not well, so many other things are going to fall apart. And I'm not willing to allow that to happen because I want to lay down an extra 30 minutes. So I'm going to get up and, and get on my bike or take that walk. I'm going to commit to an hour of therapy so I can process why I'm triggered when I see a little girl with her father. Like, what is that? What does that do for me? And so those things are important if we want to grow. And I think when you really have that hard talk with yourself, it's easy for you to prioritize and, and not make um, excuses. So I didn't anticipate responding in that way, but that just is what came up out of my heart. It's not like a technical response, but I really think it's, it's just what it is. It's like we have to prioritize our wellness or we will not be here. Oh, we will not be here that part right that's it <laughs> and and let's just put that at top of mind right and also what i thought about as actually as i was working out either yesterday i think yesterday mm -hmm. there is going to come a time where you're not going to be able to work out you need to take advantage of the limbs that you have right now that's able to do this right you have to appreciate what God has given you right now, right? And I, you know, and I feel like if I'm not working out and eating right, that means I'm not appreciating what I have right now. And so what if it's actually removed or taken away? And Christy, you know, to that point, that is also what can, can sustain you in it, right? When I'm on my bike and I'm looking at my little legs going around, I'm like, they can actually do that. Whereas somebody, they got out of their bed and they had to put on a prosthetic leg. Or they had to grab their their um, cane or their walker or their crutches. So that motivates me to go an extra five minutes because, like you said, I actually can do that. I have the ability to do that. So I don't want to take that for granted. Yeah. Chris, what do you think about that? Uh, definitely. So one, one of the things you said about being able to prioritize. Right. So we have to we have to rank our list. If we have 50 things that we want to accomplish with this wellness plan, we're not going to accomplish 50 all at the same time. Right. We need to whittle that list down. So ranking the item, ranking the items that you want to accomplish one to 10, 10 being the things that you're doing the best, one being the things that you're not doing so well. And then you look at your list and prioritize three to maybe five items on that list 
for your wellness plan and then tackle those things first. Right. So that way you're not trying to scatter your focus um, and try to accomplish too many things. It'll make you uh, the probability of you being successful um, will be higher if you have a smaller list and you can really focus on keeping these things simple, accountable and repeatable. Right. So making your goals clear, but making them simple for you to do. Schedule these things, put them on your calendar, communicate to your family partners. Hey, this is that. This is the mommy day. This is, you know, daddy's half day to, uh, to for daddy's relaxation or to work on the professional goals, um, making sure you're accountable to yourself, um, establishing some type of uh, uh, consequence or uh, something that you have to do if your exercise is not done. If you don't eat right, if you don't contribute to your financial plan or your professional goal for that week or that month, you're, you're uh, keeping yourself going by making uh, yourself accountable to someone else or to yourself by some type of infraction. And then make it repeatable. The, the more often you can engage in this process of your uh, of your wellness plan by self-evaluation and, and, and being accountable, the more likely you are to be successful and then cont continue to do it. So as you check off one item or one goal, you're able to go back and add that next thing that you needed a little bit of work on or need a little uh, improvement on. Um, so simple, accountable and repeatable and then just keep on going. Christy, I wanted to add one more thing. I know we talked a lot about about like, you know, physical and financial, but I also want to talk more about emotional and relationships. Right. And so looking at the things and the people that do not make me feel well and finding out how can we limit our exposure to those things, whether it's food, whether it's people whether it's places, it's energy. And so how do we um, negate coming in contact with things that don't make us feel good and don't make us feel well? Love the addition. So, <laughs> you know, recap. I love, you know, Chris, you put it simple, accountable, repeatable, and identify those negative people and negative things and negative energies, um, you know, and, and create your boundaries around those things. I think that is really the best way to really sum it up. And then understanding your why, right? And, and being intentional about what it is you want for yourself. Um that's really going to help you to not only just create the plan, but stick to the plan, right? Um, super important, super important. And we know health is wealth and not just physical health, but mental health, spiritual health. Um, we have to really tap into all of our different types of health to make us our you know, whole self. Um, please let us know we are two minutes over our one o'clock. Um, but we, I feel like, you know, it was so much information today. Um, thank you for everyone that is here for being here. Um, I pray that this was helpful for you also that you just got to know smile a little better. Um, who we are, the people behind Smile. Um, you know, we are super focused this year to connect with even more corporations and also even more school districts. Um, we know to be able to really help in the manner that we want um, and help the masses, we have to connect um, with these different um, larger, larger corporations. And so that's our goal. Um, and so if you are, you know, in a corporation, we are focused on tech. However, we do work with um, other industries. Um, and even though we are in the DMV, we provide services all over the United States. Um, our clients are really all over. And so um, reach out to us. If you know that you have not been putting mental health as a priority, it needs to be a priority this year, right? Make sure it's top of mind for your leaders in your organization, for your staff. Um, put some supports in place for them. We have to remember at the end of the day, yes, this is work, but people are people. And what we are going through, it always, you know, transitions into work. It doesn't matter if we try to say leave it at the door or not. Um, we're human beings, right? And so we all manage things in different ways. And so we definitely hope this was helpful. Um, let us know if you have any other questions, um, comments, 
um, you know, or just want to meet with us to just look into our services a little bit more. Um, DM us, any one of us. We're all on LinkedIn, as you can see. Um, we can help provide you with that information. We look forward to helping even more people this year, providing even more workshops. Um, we are, like Javay had told you, we are getting into continual education, so professional development for our mental health therapists, um, really focusing in on the black and brown community and building up their skill set. Um, so we are just going to be on a roll this year. And we hope that you can join um, this roller coaster with us so we can help support you um, in all the ways that you need to be supported. I'm going to just bring back everyone just so we all can say our goodbye, just so we can wave to you. Let me add everyone back. So get ready if you're in. Let me see who's still in. We have Jave. Let's see how that's gonna work. We have Marcus. <laughs> and there's Beth. So from the whole smile team, thank you for being here. Have a great rest of your week. And um, we look forward to seeing you again. We'll be back next month with our LinkedIn Live. But um, make sure you connect with all of us on LinkedIn. Um, you know, see what we're up to all of our events. So thank you and goodbye from the smile team. Thank you. Thank you.